So how is this possible? That's the question I've been wondering, and here's what I've figured out. By the way, my name is Hickory Shaver. I'm a junior here at Hawaii Preparatory Academy, and I embrace social media, and here's why. Through the globalization of technology, I'm personally able to keep, stay connected with friends around the world. Um, these platforms, such as Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, allow me to connect and stay connect and enhance my friendships with people all around. Since I was a young child, my parents have taken me around the world to meet new people, create memories, and most importantly, learn from them. I've been to Europe with my dad to his workplaces and I've been to Europe with my dad to his workplaces and went to kindergarten and preschool in Japan with my mother. Yet more recently, my parents have also sent me to international camps in Europe to, to broaden my global perspective and become more international. And from those camps, I've made friends with people I would have never met if I stayed here in Hawaii. And I expect these friendships to last a lifetime. For example, when I was in St. Gilgen, Austria, three years ago, I made two very close friends, Olivia from New York City and Felipe from Madrid, Spain. I've stayed in touch with Olivia through the ability to call her, FaceTime her, and view her social media whenever I wanted. But I've also since then traveled to New York City and visited her home and also went to Iceland together. Although I don't stay in touch with everyone I've met at camp, I'm still able to see what they're up to. For example, when I was at the American School in Switzerland in Lugano, I made a ton of Snapchat and Instagram friends. And from that, I was able to see their diverse lives, from school life to bubble parties in Ibiza and shopping in Paris. Although I don't stay in touch with everyone on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm still able to see what's going on half a globe away. Pretty incredible if what, is what I think. While I've had these personal experiences, I'm not the only one. An organization called Statista has done extensive research, and here are some of their most relevant and interesting findings that demonstrate how pervasive social media truly is. Of the 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet in late 2018, 4.2 billion had access to internet. That's over 55% of the global population. And of those 4.2, 2.3 had were monthly users to Facebook, and 1 billion were monthly users to Instagram. It's clear to me that all these people are connected through social media, and that therefore there's no escape. It's everywhere. Even with all the positive contributions, I'm fully aware of the criticism that's said about social media, like the United Kingdom so United Kingdom's Royal Society for Public Health states that there is, in fact, Instagram is the worst social media platform for young people, particularly causing them depression and anxiety. And although these problems may be true, it doesn't negate the fact that one billion people still use Instagram every month. For me, there are many positives, like whenever I'm overwhelmed with AP exams, like especially biology, or even writing this TED Talk, I know I can pick up my phone, text a friend, Snapchat a friend, because there will always be someone that is available and in the right time zone that's also going to be awake. Um, which sounds pretty beneficial to my well-being. While there... While I see both sides, I'm not the only one. Another study by the Royal Society of Public Health states that there are, in fact, both positives and negatives linked to social media. Some negatives include damaging body confidence. Two-thirds of the people they surveyed acknowledged that they had digitally manipulated their images. To the left is a picture of me, unedited, and to the right is a picture of me where I pinched my waist to fit the hourglass body ideal or the possibility of being addicted to your phones because you fear of missing out on things happening elsewhere. Like these HP students enjoying a wonderful Sodexo dinner, yet instead of talking to each other face to face, they're all on their phones. But I think there are many positives, like self-expression and sharing your talents and passions, like Jazzy, who loves to post about her music. Or the ability to stay connected to friends you don't see every day, like Tippy, who uses Facebook Messenger to call her friends back home in Taipei. This can be a mood booster to stay connected and talk to like-minded people, especially when times are tough. Social media both has both negatives and positives. For me, I like to look at the glass half full and appreciate that because of social media, I'm able to stay connected with friends that don't just live in Hawaii, but everywhere else in the world. 
I'm sure that many of you are also grateful for social media and other networks to keep you updated and connected. Even though for most people this has become part of their lifestyle, it's a choice on how it inc you incorporate into your own. For many people like me, we like to embrace it since it's not going anywhere. So please continue snapping, videoing, posting, and texting your friends and family. Thank you.